Hey guys, how's it going? I'm Austin Hare, and I'm here today with Corey Graft, the founder of Halo Virtual Tours. So, how you doing this afternoon, Corey? Hey Austin, I'm doing good. Thanks for having me back. It's good to see you guys again. Yeah, absolutely, man. Well, uh, today we wanted to go over real estate photography in particular. Uh, you know, real estate is obviously a big transaction. It's a big investment. It's a lot of people's biggest investment that they'll make in their entire life. And so, we wanted to go through, you know, Sometimes you can have a temptation just to go through, you say to yourself, I have the newest version of the iPhone or whatever phone that you have and you want to use that camera. But really, you know, um, you get added benefit from paying for professional photos, right? So why why would you go through and, and use professional photography for your listings? Right, I'm Austin, obviously your listeners, they're they're pretty conscious of their ROI. They're, they're looking for things that are really going to give them a benefit and a leg up in this game that we all play, right? And so for for when you're thinking about marketing a property of any type, whether it's a sale or a lease type of property, or you're looking to document your new construction photography, it's gonna be right there at the forefront. We're all visual people. And you know, before people even set foot in a property, 90% of them have already looked at the pictures online, right? So, and, and more benefits beyond that, you're able to use them for your marketing. You can put them on your social media, you can send out email blasts with your new pictures or with your new twilight photo or your, your virtual tour. Um, and if you really wanna stand apart from the crowd, why not go old school, right? Let's do, let's bring back the mail campaign, the, mm. the postcard. So really it gives you a way to show off your property and to really stand out and give people the information they, they need. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, we've moved so far away from direct mail and gone so gung-ho with digital marketing that, like you said, stepping back into that direct mail, less people are doing it now. So I think that's a great idea. But um, HDR, let's talk about that for a second. That's a term, you know, it's very common, but what does it actually mean? What can you expect when you see the words HDR? Right. Well, HDR essentially that's high dynamic range is, is what that stands for. And, and really, it's just a really cool way of saying, let's make the picture look really colorful essentially. So the dark, you know, the blacks, the browns, the blues, they, they really get nice and dark and deep tones and the brighter colors, they'll stand out and become more vibrant. You know, your TV at home is probably HDR now, right? That's that's sort of the industry standard. And, and the photography industry is no different. We want to stand out and sound like we have the best services that we can offer, right? So when, when you see HDR, it's really, it's a professional photographer with this professional camera coming in shooting photos and editing them in such a way that they're going to be more vivid and stand out okay. from the crowd. All right. Yeah, absolutely makes sense. So uh, are you interested in sort of ballpark prices on these services as we kind of touch on them? Yeah. What would it be okay. for? So traditional photography, you're going to order a you know, set amount of photos, be it 30, 40, 50 photos. You'll probably spend somewhere in the ballpark of two to $300 for that type of service. And that should include the HDR type of photos. Okay. Um, now, another term that has become popular lately is virtual staging. Can you explain what that means exactly? Right. So staging itself became popular probably with everybody that watched HGTV in the, the early 2000s. A company would come in and decorate a, a home or an office so people can really get an impression of what the space is like. Uh, so they'll put furniture in or decor on the walls. And essentially, we're able to now do that virtually. So I can go and take photos or a virtual tour of your office that you're marketing, and then we can take it back to the studio and add in all of that office equipment. Maybe you're, you're planning a barista coffee bar for your employees in the corner. You know, the sky's really the limit with something like that, but it really gives prospective you know, buyers or tenants an idea of what, how the space can be used and how it's functional. Yeah, and I think it's cool because you know, it's so difficult to actually physically stage a room. And so being able to stage it, you can play with it. It's going to cost you, obviously, a little bit, I'm sure. But um, but it's cheaper than actually staging. Exactly, the labor cost. I mean, what's the ballpark range? Uh, virtual staging, uh, most people are charging on a per photo or a per space basis. And I've seen prices as low as $50 per photo and up to several hundreds or even thousands if you really want to, say, you know, stage an entire building that's really not quite finished. Um, and, and do the build out virtually, it's, you'll, you'll pay for that. Mm, okay. Um, panorama, you know, I, we've all got that on our phones, but how can you explain that? Right. So basically a panorama allows the viewer to see more of the subject area that they're trying to look at. So when you do a panorama on your phone, 
you're basically taking a bunch of small pictures and stitching them together to get a better perspective of the area. Now panoramas have changed with you know the advent of cameras like this. It's now able to spin all the way around, capture the entire room, and you're able to actually spin around the entire area. So when we say panorama now, that is what I would recommend getting is a 360 degree photo or a panorama photo that you're able to then access the entirety of the room. You have a much nicer perspective. Okay, and now how important is it do you think to take these photos during the golden hour or at twilight? Twilight, right. Uh, a lot of people value that type of photography just because photographers will tell you it, it shines the best light on your particular property, right? It's when it's at its most beautiful time. Uh, the sunlight is, it's soft, but the colors are nice and deep and it's, I mean, it's just a great time to take photos, uh, but you'll, you'll pay for those, right? Because that photographer, they only have one twilight or golden hour in their day. So if you want their time, you're going to pay for it because you're competing for it and expect to pay one to $200 for that type of service. Mm. Okay. Yeah. And you know, obviously you don't need this for the inside, right? I mean, this right. is really, it's just for the exterior photos. So, all right. Um, now they've also come out with a blue sky guarantee. Can you explain what that is? So similar to how the twilight photography works, you're, you're basically saying, I'm going to take photos of your property from the exterior and the sky will be blue. There will be nice white fluffy clouds. It will look like a perfect sunshiny day. Um, this is typically achieved after the photos are taken. They'll be put into a, a photo processing application and the sky will be added. Again, it's the idea is to give the best visual you know, cues that you can on the property to make it look its best. Okay. All right. Um, and price range for? Uh, the Blue Sky Guarantee, I've seen it go for 80 bucks, 150 bucks. It, it just depends on the market that you're in. Okay, now let's talk about aerial footage, you know, videos, drone footage, stuff like that. Ah, I do love that. Drone, drones are, they're really cool. I don't know if you've seen them, you know, if you've seen anybody flying them, but, you know, what you're able to do is really change a person's perspective on the property. So, you know, typically we're just used to looking in, most of the properties above us, but now we're able to actually get out there, go from a bird, bird's eye perspective, really see how things are laying out. Uh, maybe where your property is in regard in regards to certain amenities within the area, be that for a residential client with parks or shopping, or perhaps a commercial client with you know being near the business district or near their potential customers, right? So you're able to really get up there and take photos. Um, typically speaking, you'll purchase a few photos of the front, maybe some of the sides and the rear, um, and then maybe one straight down to give you some great perspective on the property. But also you can do a full video, right? Where so maybe somebody, the drone operator, starts out really tight, right in the right, focused in on your building, and then starts pulling back and flying up, and really the perspective of the area just opens up. And it's it's a great way to get people's eyes interested in your property because you're you're definitely setting yourself apart from other listings. Yeah, it was cool. You know, you came out and did the drone footage on my Airbnbs. And that was really crazy to see it from that perspective, adding that to the listing really helped it stand out because you get such an orientation. You know, even when my wife and I were going through looking for houses to buy, the difference between those properties that had the drones and didn't is, is very staggering because it's so, it just helps you create a sense of orientation. Um, it's, especially if you've only got a couple of photos, you don't have a virtual tour, uh, they're all slapped together. You really, you don't have any idea. You can kind of tell about how nice it is, like how new the appliances are, but you don't you don't have a feel for the property at all. And I, I think that the drone footage is uh, extremely beneficial for that. Yeah, properties are more than just the interior, right? The, the outside, it's it's important to most people. And, and that really gives you the added perspective um, and it, it sets you apart in your marketing efforts. Okay, um, 3D, you know, 3D panorama, what is that? Yeah, we kind of touched on that earlier with the, the basic panoramas. I think maybe it would be better to talk about just a virtual tour in general, right, at this point, because, I mean, a virtual tour essentially takes dozens of the 3D panoramas and stitches them together in a way that you can walk through the property. And I know we did the podcast previously for the virtual tour, so we don't have to go too in depth <laughs> on this. But for those of you who haven't listened to that, a virtual tour, basically, someone will come out to your property, they'll come out with a fairly sophisticated camera, uh, and they'll walk through it, and they'll take a few scans from every room, and 
there's algorithms and software that is able to stitch those together and create basically your house as a, a virtual model. And so then someone's able to tour your house from their own perspective anytime they want from the comfort of their home, from their office, wherever. So essentially they, they enable you to save time and money uh, in, in people touring your, your property, your showings are always live. And I mean, really the biggest takeaway I've found for people is they're able to pre-qualify people by giving them their virtual tour, right? So maybe you don't wanna show your, your rental property to 10 people. Maybe it would save you a lot of time because six of them aren't gonna be interested because of what they see in the virtual tour. So really these are, these are time-saving measures and a virtual tour kind of stitches together a lot of the benefits of the other traditional photography types and really sort of brings it all into one cohesive package. Because from this tour, I can pull HDR photos, right? I can virtually stage the images that we take out of there. Some people even will virtually stage their virtual tour. So you can get very complex, but it's it's a great way to market right now. Mm, yeah, it is so convenient. I mean, I can say as a consumer looking uh, through residential properties, that it was very frustrating when you came to a house that didn't have one. <laughs> it is, it is. But if you are the house that does have one, I mean, you've really set yourself apart, right? Yep. Um, so yeah, at the end of the day, you know, everything that we talked about here is important. Um, and speaking of that, what like what was the price for like the aerial footage, and then what's the price typical price for a virtual tour? Right. I got I got excited by the drone. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, so aerial photography, if it's just standalone you're probably in the ballpark of $400. If you're adding it on to other photography services, usually they'll knock about a hundred bucks off. So you could expect to pay, you know, one, two, three hundred dollars Okay. Just depending on the market you're in. And general price range for a virtual tour? Virtual tours, um, it can vary drastically based on your square footage and the complexities. Uh, most virtual tours, you know, you can expect to spend at least 200 bucks. Uh, most of them are, are going higher than that, three to five hundred dollars, uh, depending on your your space and your requirements, right? Okay, so yeah, so like a small residential house might be around two hundred, a larger commercial property maybe closer to five hundred, somewhere yeah. around that. Yeah, so exactly. makes sense. And you know, uh, at the end of the day, the best option is is just to do everything, like hire a professional photographer, hire a aerial photographer to do drone shoot shootings, and then also hire a virtual photographer. But that's the most expensive option too. So I think it just seems like a great compromise is using the virtual tour and the drone footage, which those are pretty irreplaceable because you can always pull out those really, really high quality 4K photos from the virtual tours. And while you might only be getting 80% of the benefit, which is still very, very high, you're only spending less than half the cost of doing everything. So it's like, you know, you get 80, maybe 90% of the benefit and you're paying less than half the cost Right. The cost benefit is on your side for doing a virtual tour and adding in the aerial photography. Because really, uh, if you, you hire a talented company to do that, they can make your marketing look almost as good as if you'd gone with the other additional services, right? And so you're, you're really not selling yourself short that way. So that would be definitely, for the budget conscious person, that would be the route that I would take. Uh, and, you know, if you have a little bit more to spend, definitely get a professional photographer to run, run through the property as well. Um, that type of service, I think, is is pretty important as well. All right. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so if you really want to know a lot more about virtual tours uh, explicitly, we'll link to that in the show notes here. Um, we talk in depth about that. But uh, if you want to just check out some examples, we'll also link to Halo Virtual Tours uh, uh, com for Corey's website. And that is all we have to say today. That's We just wanted to go over the pros and the cons to uh, help shed some clarity into what are these terms that are getting thrown around and hopefully help you guys make some informed decisions. So thanks for listening and we'll catch you guys next time. Obviously here at Leaders Real Estate, we're more than happy to answer any questions and help you guys if you're looking for a property or just want some more information, feel free to drop us a line or shoot us an email.